Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy. And today I want to show you the plate cycler from Chitu Systems. So the plate cycler is Chitu Systems solution to having an automated continuous printing process specifically for the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. And it does it using a variety of different parts that are purely mechanical. There are no electronics involved and you don't have to modify anything really important on the printer. And the whole thing just fits together and it works through some modified G-code that I'm gonna show you how you can generate yourself to get this up and running. And of course, I'm also gonna show you what it's like to use this and what my experience has been like using it. But first, I do need to thank G2 Systems for not only sending the plate cycler for me to check out, but also the A1 Mini to use it on because I didn't have one before. So thank you very much for that. And when you get this, it does come with everything that you need to get it set up. You don't need to have anything extra. You don't even need to have any additional plates because you have to use the plates that are designed specifically for the plate cycler. And what I mean by that is they all have this little plastic piece right here in the front. And that is necessary in order, for example, the ejector in the front, it needs to be able to lift up this plate plate in order to get it off the bed and push it off. And then also this needs to be here in order for the bed to be able to grab a new fresh plate from the tray back here and pull it onto the bed once you start up another automated print. Now, getting this all installed was pretty simple. Uh, the instructions I thought were quite clear. And there's also a video guide that you can follow so you can see exactly how they do it. And it involves taking this piece right here, which is a print bed cable guide and attaching that to the back of the print bed where the heat bed cable is. And then from there, you have to attach this part right here that is behind the plate that is called the gripper. And then from there, there's also the ejector that you just slide on to the very front of the printer right here. There's also the tray that sits on the back and the holder that holds the tray right there in the back. And then you also have the lifter, the lifter that you have to put right up here on top. And then you have to relocate where you would put the filament in. Usually it's right on the side of this motor, but you have to take that part out. And then there's another slot right here on the lifter that you plug that into. And then there is this cable that runs from the lifter, this black cable. It can go underneath the printer. It can be placed onto the side and that connects to the ejector. And what happens is once the print head moves towards this part here to cut the filament, it's going to engage this lifter and is going to cause this part here to lift up. And by that point, the bed is already going to be all the way up here. And that is just going to lift the plate up. And then through a series of back and forth motions, eventually the plate will be pushed off of the print bed and then a fresh plate is going to be grabbed from the back and pulled onto the print bed. I know it might sound a little bit confusing and that's why I have this video here to show you exactly what it looks like as this whole process is working. don't have a 
plate on the bed, you can see that this gripper piece here, it actually moves up. And that makes it so that when you move it back, it can grip onto another plate, just like this. And then it has to move back again. It'll grab a little bit more to move it forward. And then once it does it one more time, is when it's going to bring the plate and magnetize it down. It is going to sit perfectly right there on the bed. And then the printing process is going to start again. And then once it's over, this plate gets ejected. Another one gets put in its place. It comes with four plates, but you can purchase more if you want. And once you're done printing with these, um, what's advised is that perhaps you have um, like some type of bin on the floor or a box or something that's cushioned so that this can just push the plate right into that box as opposed to just wanting it to go on the table. Because I will tell you that um, sometimes when it ejects the plate, sometimes the print bed will push it clean out of the way. And then sometimes it'll just kind of hang out kind of like right here, kind of like on the edge, just like that. So I think that's why they do recommend that you have somewhere where when this falls down, it'll just be able to fall into something as opposed to just kind of being in the way. And as far as using it, it's been very easy and it's been reliable for the most part. The only issue that I had is detailed in the instructions. And that's when you have to get this spring tensioner system that they've implemented uh, just right. So there is a screw right here on the tray and using the Allen key that they provide, you have to turn that screw and there's these springs that you insert in here as well. And basically you just have to make it so that when you move the print bed back, you have to make this low enough so that this will be able to grip onto the next plate to pull it over. And if it's not not catching anything the plate is just moving back and forth and there's no action then you just have to keep on twisting it keep trying keep twisting keep trying until you get it to be exactly where you want it to be sometimes if you don't have it set up properly when the bed moves backwards it's not going to catch any of the tray and it will just be freely moving back and forth and also if you don't have it set up properly it'll be moving back here, but it won't actually catch the trays under it. It might just be hitting like the top or the middle of the tray. So you have to fine tune that one screw and then just manually test it to make sure things are exactly where you need it to be. And then you'll be pretty much good to go. And that's what I did at first. Um, but then after trying it for like the second time, I guess those springs just kind of, I don't know, uh, their tension changed. And then I had to go back and I had to readjust it. But then after I did that, I, it's been like a month and a half and I haven't needed to mess with that again. So it just took a little bit of trial and error in the beginning to get it to catch just right. But since then, it's been working pretty darn smooth. So how in the heck do you tell the printer that you want to use this system and you want to use all of these trays? How in the world does it even know? Well, that's also very easy. So you just simply go into Bamboo Studio and let's say you have four plates of prints that you want to make. You just make four different plates using the add plate function in Bamboo Studio and then you use the slice all feature and then you export that file not to your not to your printer but to your computer so you export that g-code file to your computer you can then go to chi2 systems special plate cycler website where you can either upload it there or you can download the plate cycler uh, software that you can use offline and then you just upload that g-code to that plate cycler program and it's going to spit out a 3mf file for you you take that 3mf file back into bamboo studio and then you send that file to the printer and then it will start up the process is going to be different than it normally would be when you start up a print but it's going to have the precise motions that are necessary for the plate cycler to function properly and when it's done with the print, it's going to eject one of the plates, it's going to bring another plate on, and then it's going to go through its whole leveling process and its calibration process, just as it would if you weren't using this system.
So most recently, I used this to print out four trays of Christmas ornaments because I'm printing nothing but 3D printed ornaments this year for my tree. And I used four plates that came with this. I had about three ornaments per plate and it went through all of them. The process took about an hour and 20 minutes or so for all of these ornaments and it just went off without a hitch. It managed to take all of those plates, printed them out and spit them out. The only interjection that I had to do was just moving the plates out of the way once they were done, just to make sure that they didn't interfere with each other. And that's why I believe Chichi Systems recommends that you have this in a way so that the plates can fall off of the surface that you're using into a box or something. So you don't have to worry about that. The thing that I like the most about this is that they've managed to get this system to work without the use of any additional electronics. It's just purely mechanical using all of the same functions that the A1 Mini already does by itself. They just modified how the motion system is going to work for getting the plates onto the bed through a simple web interface or a simple app that you can download on your computer. And it works and it's effective. And I think that this could be a very sensible option for someone who wants to do continuous 3D printing. Maybe you have a print farm and you have A1 Minis in that farm. Or maybe you just want to print a bunch of things at one time and you don't want to have to go back and take prints off of a plate and, and re-upload files and do all that stuff. You can just let the printer do its thing and let the plate cycler cycle the plates for you. So right now, as I record this, I don't know how much this system is going to cost, but I do know that they're aiming for a December 4th release date. So once that pricing information does become available, I'll just go ahead and leave a link down in the description that will tell you what the price is and where you can get it from T2 Systems. But it's been very fun uh, using this thing and uh, it doesn't add too much extra length to the A1 Mini. It does add a little bit, you know, because of the tray right here and the ejector in the front, but it's still a very small and compact machine. And uh, if you're looking for something like this and you don't want to deal with anything that's you know complicated or things that require electronics then this can be the system for you so go ahead and give it a shot so that's it for now thank you all so much for watching till next time take care of yourselves and i'll speak to you soon